Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 8 which is all about cellular respiration. This will be the first quarter topic, week 8 and day 2. And this lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to first is to define cellular respiration and explain the two main types of respiration. The second one is to explain the rules of the glucose and oxygen in the cellular respiration and how they are broken down and utilized to produce ATP. And the third one is to appreciate the importance of the ATP as an energy sources for essential cellular activities including the muscle contraction, active transport, and biosynthesis by answering the guide questions. For the explicitation, the students will watch a video about the cellular respiration. After the students will watch the video, the students now answer the following guide questions. For the first guide question, what is cellular respiration? So cellular respiration is the process by which cells break down organic molecules such as glucose to produce the ATP or adenosine triphosphate. This is the primary energy currency of the cells. It is the fundamental metabolic process that allows cells to extract the energy stored in the glucose and convert it into a form that can be readily used to power various cellular activities. For the second guide question, what are the two types of respiration? So the two types of respiration are the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. For the aerobic respiration, it occurs in the presence of oxygen involves a complete breakdown of glucose to produce a larger amount of ATP and includes the stage of glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Another type of cellular respiration is the anaerobic respiration. So it occurs in the absence of oxygen, involves an in complete breakdown of glucose to produce a smaller amount of ATP and it includes only the glycolysis stage without the citric acid and the electron transport chain. For the third guide questions, what are the stages in cellular respiration? So the first stage is the glycolysis. So the first stage of the cellular respiration and it occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell and breaks down glucose into pyruvate molecules and produces a small amount of ATP. The second stage in cellular respiration is the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. It occurs in the mitochondria, further breaks down the pyruvate molecules from glycolysis, and produces additional ATP as well as NADH and FADH2 electrons carriers. The third stages in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. It occurs in the mitochondria and the NADH and FADH2 electrons carriers from the Krebs cycles are used to generate a photon gradient. This photon gradient is then used to drive the production of the large amount of ATP through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. For the fourth guide questions, what are the rules of glucose and oxygen in cellular respiration and how they are broken down and utilized to produce ATP? 
So the rules of glucose is it is the primary organic molecules broken down during the cellular respiration. And during the glycolysis, glucose is broken down into two pyruvate molecules, releasing a small amount of ATP. Another role of glucose is that the pyruvate molecules then enter the citric acid cycles where they are further broken down to release electrons that are used in the electron transport chain. The complete breakdown of glucose molecules provide the energy and reducing power such as the NADH, FADH2 that are needed to drive the production of large amounts of ATP through oxidative phosphorus. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain during the aerobic respiration. So as electrons are passed through the electron transport chain, oxygen accepts the electrons and is reduced to water. This electron transport and oxygen reduction process creates a photon gradient that powers the ATP synthesis enzyme to produce the ATP. Oxygen is required for the complete aerobic breakdown of glucose. Without oxygen, cells must resort to less efficient anaerobic respiration. For the fifth guide questions, what is the importance of ATP as energy source for cellular activities including the muscle contraction, active transport, and biosynthesis? For the muscle contraction, ATP provides the energy needed for the actin and myosin filaments to slide each other, enable the muscle contraction and movement. And without a steady supply of ATP, muscles would be unable to generate the force required for physical activity. And for the active transport, ATP powers the active transport molecules and ions across the cell membranes against their concentration gradients. This includes the transport of nutrients, waste products, and signaling molecules that are essential for cellular function. For the biosynthesis, ATP is used as an energy source to drive the synthesis of complex biomolecules such as proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. This allows cells to create structural components and regulatory molecules needed for growth, repair, and other vital processes. For the sixth guide question, what is the significance of cellular respiration in human health and disease, including its role in metabolism, aging, conditions such as diabetes and cancer? For the metabolism, cellular respiration is the fundamental process that powers the body metabolism, converting the energy in food into usable form of ATP. So disruptions in cellular respirations can lead to metabolic disorders like diabetes, where the body's ability to regulate glucose and energy production is impaired. For the aging, so over time, mitochondrial function and efficiency of cellular respiration can decline, contributing to the aging process. So decreased ATP production and increased oxidative stress from cellular respiration have been linked to the development of age-related disease. And for the diabetes, in diabetes, the body's ability to properly regulate blood glucose levels is compromised, which can disrupt the normal cellular respiration process. So impaired glucose metabolism and mitochondrial dysfunction are both hallmarks of diabetes and can contribute to the development of complications. Another one is the cancer cells. So cancer cells often exhibit altered metabolic profiles which increase reliance on glycolysis which is the first stage of the cellular respiration even in the presence of oxygen. This Warburg effect can provide cancer cells with the growth advantage and targeting cellular respiration pathways has become 
an area of interest in cancer research.